everyone, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I'm Aisha. So today I'm gonna be installing a hard race sway bar and subframe brace. In this video, I'll only be installing the rear sway bar, but whenever you are installing sway bars, you should install a front and a rear. And you should also make sure that they are coinciding with each other. So make sure that you do research as to what size you should get because for different cars, the different weight of the car, it's gonna be different. If you don't run both sway bars, you run the risk of losing control of the car and either spinning out, running off the side of the road, getting in some accident. So make sure you do your homework and run two sway bars that coincide with each other. Be safe. One of the best modifications to improve handling to your vehicle is to add sway bars. This hard race rear sway bar kit includes a 24.5 millimeter hollow bar with two adjustment positions. The kit also includes a subframe brace which adds strength and helps prevent tearing of the factory subframe from the stress of adding a sway bar. All of the necessary mounting hardware comes along with the kit, including the D-brackets and bushings. One thing to note is that the end links are not included in the kit and will need to be purchased separately. The kit also includes instructions which are really helpful for insulation. If you're interested in purchasing a hard race sway bar kit like this, you can visit velocityshop.com. To get started, I'm going to jack up the rear of the car and support it with jack stands. I have an existing subframe brace and lower tie bar, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those. If you don't already have a subframe brace on your car, then you're basically just going to remove the two bolts that go through the lower control arms. So before I get under the car, I want to point out that there are four different bolts that are included in this kit, and they are all different lengths. So you're going to have to pay attention to the different lengths as to which position they go in. The longest bolt is going to be the bolt that goes through the subframe brace and through the lower control arm. The other three bolts are going to go through the subframe brace, through the spacer, and tighten with this backing plate. So the longest bolt is going to go through the top hole with a washer. Then the second longest bolt is going to go through the middle hole with no washer. Then the shortest bolt is going to go through the bottom hole with a washer. The installation of the D-brackets is super simple. The bushing has a split in it, so you just open it up and put it right over the sway bar. Then the D-bracket goes on top of it. and the D-bracket gets mounted to the subframe brace using the very top and the very bottom bolts. One thing I wanna point out is that this middle bolt here gets covered when you are installing the sway bar D-bracket. So that bolt is going to have to be tightened before you can install the sway bar. So there's a certain sequence that we have to tighten the bolts for the subframe brace before we can install the sway bar. So now I'm just gonna put the other D-bracket and bushing on the sway bar to be ready to mount it up underneath the car. So 
So this is the Hard Race Adjustable Sway Bar End Link. It's adjustable by twisting this middle section here. And insulation is pretty simple and straightforward. Basically, one end gets installed in the sway bar and the other end gets installed into the lower control arm. Then I'm going to thread the upper bolt into the backing plate as well and then also the lower bolt that's going to thread into that spacer. The reason that I'm threading all of the bolts in is because that middle bolt has to be tightened and you want to make sure that the other bolts are in so that everything is in the correct position. Once all of the bolts are threaded into the correct holes, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the lower control arm bolts and also that middle bolt that's going to be covered by the sway bar Z brackets. Once the bolts that go through the lower control arm and that middle bolt that's going to be covered by the D bracket are tightened, then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two bolts that are gonna hold the D brackets on. Now I'm gonna install the sway bar by mounting the D brackets onto the subframe brace. You don't want to tighten the bolts for the D brackets as yet. You want to make sure that the sway bar can be maneuvered to make it easier when you're installing the end links. Now I'm just going to separate the end link to make it easier to get that one end into the lower control arm. Then I'm going to thread the one end into the lower control arm. I'm using the center hole on my lower control arms, but depending on what sway bar and lower control arm combination you have, you may have to use a different hole in order to achieve the ideal 90 degree position for the end link. Now I'm going to connect the end link pieces back together. Now I'm going to install the other end of the end link into the sway bar. The hole that I'm using on the sway bar towards the front of the car is the softest setting of the sway bar. The hole towards the rear of the car is the stiffest setting. I've never used sway bars before, so I'm going to start off by using the softest setting. I didn't get to record this, but at this point you're going to tighten the nuts against the adjusting portion of the end link to lock it in place. Then you're going to tighten the end link into the lower control arm, then into the sway bar. After the end links are installed and tightened, now you can go ahead and tighten the D-bracket bolts. And that concludes the installation of the Hard Race Sway Bar and Subframe Brace Kit. Now you can take your car for a test drive and enjoy the handling.
Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so you get the notifications. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.